Do you actually have to be overweight or obese to be insulin resistant? Now, if you guys have clicked on this video, I'm sure you've already heard about the term insulin resistance. And so what we're gonna go over in this video is showing some pretty uh, impactful evidence that shows that you don't actually have to be overweight or have any signs of being a type two diabetic to actually be experiencing insulin resistance in muscle tissue. So let's say for example that you just do not tolerate carbohydrates well, you eat carbohydrates and you kind of blow up like a balloon, or let's say for example, you are finding it very hard in the gym to lose weight and you feel like no matter what you're doing, you're just not really seeing the type of results that you want. Well, a lot of this could be due to being insulin resistant. And in today's video, we're gonna really look at three things. We're gonna look at what is insulin resistance from a different perspective of just thinking, hey, your body is producing too much. So we're gonna look at it from a different lens. And then the other thing we're gonna look at is what type of blood work would you have to do to find out if you actually were insulin resistant? And then the last thing that we're going to look at are just some practical applications that you could start applying today and the rest of this week to really start seeing some drastic changes and improvements in overall body composition and lowering your body's production of insulin. What's up guys, Coach Eric Bowling here and look in today's video, let's really look at this whole topic of being insulin resistant. Now, first and foremost, there's a lot of different ways that a person can be insulin resistant. So when we talk about insulin resistance, the first thing that I wanna go ahead and explain is the easiest way to look at it is that there's just too much energy in the cell already through overconsumption of calories and that because your body is constantly getting the signal to produce insulin because blood sugar is staying outside of the cell, your body is pretty much running into an issue that can kind of look like this. And so insulin resistance from what a lot of the research shows is that we have two things really occurring and you can even potentially have three things. So first and foremost, I think what's ending up happening is people are over consuming calories. And when you over consume calories, we find something really interesting happening. The energy is already in the cell, probably at its maximum capacity, but because you're continually eating and elevating blood sugar levels, you also have energy outside the cell. And because whenever blood sugar stays outside of the cell for too long, the pancreas is gonna get a signal to produce more insulin, and that insulin is going to be responsible for trying to drive those in, that energy into the cell. Now what happens when that cell is already filled up? Well, your body can't just continually cram that energy in, so now what ends up happening is it's almost like your body is crying wolf, right? Because your body's saying, hey, I'm getting the signal to produce insulin, but the cells are already filled with energy. So now I have all this insulin that's being produced. What's really happening? And so this is kind of the phenomenon that can occur with insulin resistance where, yeah, your body is just it's producing too much. And it's almost like your body is viewing it as a false signal, like it's crying wolf. So then the other thing that can start to occur over time is that maybe when your blood sugar levels are elevated for extended periods of time, your body's just no longer really getting the signal to produce insulin anymore because it's saying, hey, well, you know, they're always like that and the cells are already filled with energy, so why do I need to clear out the blood sugar? And now this is pretty much what can end up happening. And you really have to ask the question, well, what is really causing this? Is it from having too much sugar? You know, we've seen that quite a bit where obviously if you eat sugar, you're going to, you know, produce insulin and you're going to raise your blood sugar levels. But then there's also evidence that shows equally that, well, if you have elevated levels of fat in the diet, that sometimes when insulin's produced, the body can then go ahead and transport those fatty acids into the cell and that can cause insulin resistance. So we have so much evidence almost on both sides showing that insulin resistance can be caused in many ways. And I think that the thing that you guys really need to take away from this is it's not really that sugar is causing insulin resistance and it's not necessarily to say that fats are causing insulin resistance. I think the good thing that we can both agree on is that overconsumption of any single macronutrient in excess is really what's going to be driving insulin resistance. And I think insulin resistance can be caused in many different ways. So now the best thing that I can suggest for you guys in terms of putting this into practice is to really look at your blood markers. Because now when we're moving into this topic of well, how do you figure out if you are insulin resistant, I think that there's a few ways that you can really go about it. 
The first thing is, well, you're going to want to look at your fasting glucose levels. And I think that's a great place for most people to start, but it doesn't really tell the whole story, right? It doesn't really paint the full picture. You know, if you just get one night of bad sleep, your, uh, your fasting glucose levels the next morning can be highly elevated. So you can't really rely on fasting glucose. While it is a good marker and you do want to see your levels somewhere in the 70 range and probably below 90, um, it's not going to tell the whole story when it comes to insulin. So one of the best tests that I think you can do are pretty much two tests. You have an insulin response test where after ingesting glucose, how long and how much insulin is produced. I think this is probably one of the te best tests that you guys can do to really figure out exactly are you insulin resistant. And then the other test that you can do is to measure HbA1c levels. And your HbA1c is pretty much your hemoglobin A1c. And that is pretty much the main cell that is going to be responsible for transporting nutrients and oxygen to the body. Now, what happens if you are low on your HbA1c and your insulin response test comes back pretty normal, but you still are overweight? Are you still insulin resistant? And I think this is something that's really interesting because I have seen many individuals who are relatively skinny in general, and they are, um, for the most part, what we would consider carb intolerant. And now one of the things that I want you guys to understand is that your ability to handle carbohydrates is not necessarily a reflection of being insulin resistant. Now we kind of throw around terms like this, meaning a person might be very insulin sensitive if they're lean, because one of the things that we have seen with uh, research on people who lower their body composition is that the more muscle tissue that you have and the less fat tissue you have, the more receptor sites on your muscle you have to take insulin in. So definitely the leaner you are, the more sensitive to insulin you're going to be. And that pretty much means that you could technically tolerate a higher carbohydrate diet than the average person. Whereas someone who is overweight or has a lot of fat on their body and, and very low levels of muscle mass, they might not be able to handle a high carbohydrate diet the same way that someone who is lean can. So now we have to ask that question, okay, well, if you are a relatively skinny individual, um, can you be insulin resistant? And the answer is more than likely you're not because insulin resistance is something that occurs in people who are over consuming calories, whether that over consumption of calories is from over consuming uh, sugar or over consuming fats. And you might be asking, well, what happens if you over consume protein? Can you still find that happening? And very rarely will we ever find that occurring. And the reason why is because protein has such a high thermic effect that the amount of protein that you would have to overeat just to get to the point where you are now uh, over consuming calories, uh, you would have to eat a lot of protein. And even if you did that, your body is still going to find a way to utilize that glucose very quickly before it decides, I'm going to take that excess uh, protein and then convert it into fat. So overconsumption of protein is not really something you have to worry about when it comes to leading towards insulin resistance. The main thing is really gonna be the overconsumption of sugar and fat, or even worse, the combination of both in excess. So now one of the things that we find is most people who think they might be skinny is they're probably actually fatter than they think. And this is something known as skinny fat. And you see, just by looking at things from a pure numbers perspective, you could technically look relatively healthy and you could potentially look skinny with clothes on, but you might actually be 25, 30% body fat um, when we actually measure body fat levels. And you have to understand, people store fat at really different levels. You might have a lot of subcutaneous fat, whereas another person might have a lot of visceral fat. And subcutaneous fat is just pretty much the fat that's over the muscle tissue. Visceral fat is going to be the fat that is intermingled with the muscle tissue and also surrounding the organs and stuff, which is definitely not the type of fat that you want. Now, while one type of fat is definitely unhealthier than the other, if you still are carrying large amounts of fat tissue on your body, whether you look skinny or not, your body's ability to handle carbohydrates may be a lot lower. Now, just because you have um, less of a tolerance to carbohydrates, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are resistant to insulin in the same way that someone who's a type two diabetic is. So what I highly suggest for most people is to just think about things in pretty much two terms. 
if you can really think about the idea of deserving and earning your carbohydrates, I think the average person would find themselves being a lot healthier. Not only that, I also believe that they would find themselves being a lot leaner without having to try as hard. And what I mean by earning your carbohydrates is very simple. Carbohydrates are an exogenous form of fuel and your body really only has a couple uses for them. Should we use them for energy now or should we use them for energy later? And so if you're really an inactive individual and you find yourself being pretty much sedentary for the majority of your life and you find yourself being pretty much sedentary, then high carbohydrates or a diet that's uh, filled with carbohydrates and sugar and processed things like that, it's not going to be serving you at all. It's only going to be useless energy that your body is converting into fat tissue because it's saying we're not using it, we're not burning it, so store it. And this is really the whole idea of energy transfer or the idea of thermodynamics. And it's the idea that energy necessarily can't be created nor can it be destroyed. It can really only be transferred. So if you are taking all that lovely food and transferring it inside your body, your body just can't say, well, you're not using it, so let's get rid of it. It now has to transfer it somewhere else. And the way that it transfers it is it's saying, well, a stored form of energy for long-term use is fat tissue. And people who are not active and not in the best shape, okay, so if you can't really like see muscle definition, you're not in the gym, you're not uh, getting 10,000 steps a day, you probably should be following a diet that's more higher protein, higher fat, and lower carbohydrate, prioritizing non-starchy carbs like vegetables, etc. Now let's go ahead and look at, well, what happens if you are insulin resistant, right? Well, I made a video that you guys can check here where I pretty much go a little bit deeper into this topic, but just to give you guys some newer uh, tips that you can follow that I did not include in this one are, are pretty much two things. And one of them is fasting. Okay, I think fasting, especially intermittent fasting, has been shown quite a bit to be really effective with not only reducing overall levels of body fat, but also with when it comes to producing ketones and making sure that your body uh, is handling insulin better. So I think implementing an intermittent fasting strategy where you go 16 hours of fasting and then you have an eight hour window where you eat, I think a strategy like that can be very, very effective when it comes to reversing insulin resistance naturally. And now another tip that I think you guys can implement, which is really good, and it's probably the most important one, is to start picking up some weights and to start training. Now, you'd be surprised, but the majority of people who lift are going to be more sensitive to insulin than those who don't lift. And this is kind of what we refer to in the, uh, in the beginning of this video, where the more muscle you have, the more insulin receptor sites you have. And that's gonna be very beneficial for your body, especially if you are someone who is insulin resistant because the more receptor sites you have, the more insulin your body can take in. And now look, this is an enormous topic. And I think the cool thing about this whole topic is that we are learning more and more as the years go on. And so there's gonna be a lot more videos that I do on this topic specifically. I know you guys over the last couple of years have really liked the last video that I put out, which is almost at a half a million views now, which can't thank you guys enough. And so over the course of the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna be diving a little bit deeper into what the latest research shows on this topic and some of the things that you guys can start implementing if you want to start reversing your insulin resistance in a natural way without the use of medication. So let me know if you guys like this video and you would like to see future content on this topic or things surrounding this topic, just go ahead and leave a like and also let me know in the comments below. And also make sure that you guys subscribe to the channel for more daily content like this. And as always guys, stay strong and I will see you next time.